I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of covenant between me and the earth. Oh, man. Now, do you understand well and the reason of the rainbow? Welcome back. Welcome, everyone, to this channel, TOV, the Open Veil TV. <clears throat> We are continuing with chapter 9. Before we move on, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget also to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you can be notified whenever I post a new video. And if you're a new subscriber, comment, drop a comment, and that says I am a new subscriber. So next time, I will mention you in the video. So, without any further talking, let's get into the topic. Chapter 9, we're going to continue in verse number 5. So we saw last time, quickly, quick recap, we saw last time, number 1, in that actually, I mean, well, number 1, we saw that um, ev that God gave dominion to, for, um, uh, uh, to Noah on every animal, and he put the fear of men into the animal, and of course, also, he told Noah, he could eat of uh, he could eat meat, so that means before that, people that were serving God were not actually into me eating meat, but they were on a strict um, plant-based diet. But because of the flood, and vegetation was gone, so God allowed them to eat meat. But my assumption was Noah was eating only the clean meat because that's what he was using to do sacrifice, just to do to do sacrifice. That's me, that's me, my assumption. Now, third thing we saw, when you're eating meat, do not eat the blood. Why? Because God said the life of the flesh is in the blood. Another reason I'm thinking is because we cannot give life. So if you cannot be eating life, if the life of the flesh is in the blood, then blood gives life. So you should not be eating blood. That's another one. Now, let's continue to verse number 5. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the, at the hand of every beast will I require it and at the hand of men, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of men. So that means, that means only God when it comes to life or blood, you shouldn't touch it at all. Now, if you're going to use it to help somebody live, that's another story. But to consume, no. We are not allowed to eat blood. Yet. <clears throat> um, so, verse 4 again. But flesh with the life thereof, meaning with the blood, you shall not eat. What does that mean? Um, that means people that are eating medium rare meat that has blood in it, that is, I would probably call it that way, an abomination. It is not, um, it is unhealthy. Many consequences can happen. Um, I know people that eat blood, that take the blood, and then I think one time I, I almost ate it because I was like, hmm. What is this thing? And and the person said, "Oh, because I was like, can I try some of that? Because I, like, I never saw that kind of texture." I said, "That looks good. Can I try some of that? And what is it?" And they said, "Oh, this is blood." And I was like, "Oh," and he said, "I know you. You you cannot eat blood because of your religion, but 
So that was like when I was like, I don't know, maybe like 10, 11 years old. But now I know it's not just my religion. This is God saying, do not eat blood. So that's another thing. Okay. And surely your blood of your life will I require at the end of every beast, will I require at the end of every man, and at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the love of men. Okay. Verse number six. Whoso, whoso sheddeth man's blood by men shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Okay. Now, do you guys remember this story? Remember God said, um, God said, so whoever sheds blood by men, by men blood will be also shed. Right? Whoso, verse number, verse number four, verse number six, whoso sheddeth men's blood, I mean, whoever sheds men's blood, meaning kill somebody, by men shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he. Do you remember this story of uh, Cain and Abel? After Cain didn't do what was right, right? Let's see what happened next. We have now, um, we know that Cain and Abel brought a sacrifice, right? And number, first number three, Bible says, And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground as an offering to the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the first ling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And God basically respected Abel's offering, but not Cain's. And Cain was mad about it. Cain didn't want to do what the world was right, but he got angry at the one that did good. And let me actually quickly say this too. In right now, those that are doing wrong, they are the ones who either curses at those that are doing right, um, hates those that are doing right, um, want to kill those that are doing right, not because those are, not because those that are doing right are basically telling them something, but their lifestyle is a is a message. Same for Noah. You see, they were doing everybody in that in Noah's time were doing wrong. God said their thoughts were evil continually, but Noah and his family. But guess who didn't like the other group? It wasn't Noah. Noah wasn't to be saved. They hated the fact that Noah was different. Same today. People that are doing evil, they hate those that are doing good. While those that are doing good wish those that are doing, that are doing evil could become better people. So the hate only goes in one direction. It doesn't go both ways. <clears throat> that keeps that in mind. Now, back to Cain and Abel. Now, what happened next? Verse number 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. The Cain slew him. What did his brother do to him? Nothing. Abel didn't do anything to it to Cain, but Cain killed the brother. Now, what does God say to him? Verse number ten now verse number nine. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Huh. <laughs> Actually, yes, you are your brother's keeper. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Oh, the blood of Abel was crying up to God from the ground. What does that mean? That means Cain just shed Abel's blood. Verse number 6. Whoso 
whatsoever or whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Cain just basically killed Abel and he shed his blood. So, people, you know the you know in the Ten Commandments it says, "Thou shalt not kill or murder." Um, <clears throat> I think this is the the seventh commandment right here. Actually, let's confirm that. Let's confirm. Um, maybe I, if I'm wrong or right, Exodus chapter twenty. You see. The Ten Commandment wasn't given on Mount Sinai, people. It was already there before Mount Sinai. Verse number, where is it? Thou shalt not kill. This is the seventh commandment. No, the sixth commandment, my bad. The sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Well, guess what? That commandment was not just given to Moses because it's been there since what? Since Noah. It's been there since Abel and Cain. So the Ten Commandments basically are written because people forgot the commandments, not because they weren't there before. So if thou shalt not kill was already there in the time of Noah or the time of Abel, then the Ten Commandments were already there in those days as well. Now, now let's move on. That was number, that was verse number six. Verse number 7, And you, be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. That again, God is reiterating um, what he just said in verse number 2. Verse number 8, And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. So, um, so, um, let's go back to that one again. So what we do have now is what? God is about to make the covenant with Noah. Now, remember, he didn't only make it with Noah. He made it with Noah, his children, and his children's descendants with the animals and the, basically the animals' descendants as well. If you look at it clearly, he says, I established the covenant with you and with your seed after you. So that covenant is not only for Noah, but it's also for Noah and his children. And now, what was that covenant? Back to number 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by waters of a flood, neither shall there be Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Wow. So, the covenant is pretty simple. There will be no more worldwide flood. Now, do we have flood in some areas? Sure. Because some places are higher or lower than other places. So, if, if the rain comes at a certain rate... In some area, it might be nothing, while in other area, it might be a flooded area, like Houston. So, when God said he would no longer destroy earth with a flood, it didn't mean that there would be no, no more um, occasional flood in some little parts. For instance, um, in Japan, there was an earthquake and it happened in the sea, which is called a tsunami. And the water rose, I don't know how many feet, and flooded a whole region. Um, that's going to happen. 
But did that actually flood the whole earth? No. And that's the covenant that in verse number 11, the covenant is neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. What does that mean? Well, it simply means that um, it simply means that if there is going to be a flood, it's not going to be worldwide. Yes, it will happen in some area. For instance, when we had that flood in Japan, it didn't affect those in Russia or in China or in Taiwan or Australia. It was just Japan. It didn't affect those in Haiti, in Dominican, in Cuba, in in Puerto Rico or anywhere else, but just Japan. So that was the covenant. There will be no more flood, a worldwide flood to erase the whole earth. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And now, now, how do we know there will be no more flood? Well, verse number 12, God said, this is the token. What does that mean, token? Well, let's look at the word token. Token. This is a word that means it's an oath. Token means an oath or a sign. A token. It's an oath. It's a sign. So basically God is saying, this is the sign. This is the oath that I take. So, so that you know I am being for real. God said, this is the token this is the token that, that of the covenant which I made with you and all creatures for perpetual generation. Perpetual generation, actually, my bad, I should have gone there too. Perpetual generation, what is, what, what does that mean, perpetual generation? Well, perpetual means what? Huh, huh. Perpetual means what? It means for a long duration. It's from antiquity. It's for the future. So, no matter what generation comes, no, ma- no matter what generation comes, this this token is going to be for them because I made it with you and your descendant. Don't forget. Now, What was the token? I will, I I do, verse number 13, I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of covenant between me and the earth. Oh, man. Now, do you understand well and the reason of the rainbow? You see, and we're gonna, I'm going to stop it right there because next time... No. Yeah, I'm going to stop it right there because next time we're going to begin from verse number 12 to, to do a third part. Because what we are looking at right now, which is called the so-called rainbow, it is not that people are misusing. It is not what God defined as the rainbow. So today, now you know the reason for the rainbow. Yes, we can talk about all the chemical and the physics of how it is, how it appears. But you can, the science, evolution, can never tell you the reason for the rainbow. So guys, I'm going to stop it right there. I'm, ooh, I hope you're going to be able to, to see the next video. 
part number three of this top of this talk, chapter nine. Anyways, uh, I hope to see you guys again, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget as well to click on the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. And if you're a new subscriber, comment below and say new subscriber. So next time I can give you a shout out. Guys, this was TOV, the Open Veil TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.